Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this another brand new day. Yes, indeed. It is Monday, I believe. Yes, Monday, the 19th of November. It is the 11th, the 11th. It is 11 minutes after 7 a.m. And here is a little Dr. Snurf. Now, I did not wake him up. He has been active, so he, he does want to go back and drink, though. So now that he's up and running, I've had him in my lap and he's been running around on my shirt and climbing up me and all that. So I'm going to put him back in his cage now because he's a sweetheart and I don't want him to get hurt. Here we go, little guy. Now, what happened this morning as well was kind of funny. My cat, she comes in the window, jumps down onto the one hamster cage and then down onto the floor. And then she sleeps now on top of that hamster cage over there in the corner because they're just plastic bin lids I put this other bin lid at an angle at the end so that when she comes down it doesn't knock the whole thing down inside well I took a shower this morning and I was going up and down and in and out and and trying to get ready and so leaving the room and coming back to the room finally when I was done I came in shut that door and when I did that, this little thing moved around on the floor near my feet. And when I looked down, it was a hamster. <laughs> a little saber. little cream. The kitty cat, while I was taking a shower, had jumped down and then went thump. Knocked that part off and knocked the main lid down into it. So when she went whomp and then fell in, she would have jumped out. But then the hamster went, wah, because the world suddenly collapsed inward on her. And so she climbed up the lid and out. Thank goodness she didn't go like underneath the door. Or anything, and I just found her right there at the base. So I've had many a loose hamster up here and I've always found them. They go running around. Sometimes they've been lost for hours because if they're behind things, I'm not going to get down on the floor. It's hard to maneuver and do stuff like that. So I just wait for them to come out. You just have to be more patient than the hamster. And I'm pretty patient. I wait out hamsters all the time. You just have to wait. You can do it. It's awesome. <laughs> So I took a shower this morning, but last night, nasty burning smell from outside. I was pretty sure it was outside, but I wasn't sure. Because in my bedroom, I got the windows open, you can't smell it. Downstairs, you can't really smell it. You come into this room, it smells like there's a fire in here. So I was really freaked out last night before going to bed. I unplugged as much as I could in case it was something in here. And then this morning I come in and same smell. So I went outside to see if I could track it down. I think while I was going walkies last night or while I had fallen asleep or some such, the neighbors must have burned some junk outside because they do that periodically. There's kind of a like fire pit outside. And so they were must have been burning stuff because when you go outside to where this fence part is that separates the two properties and the smell it's kind of a really bad burned plastic electrical smell and it's coming from that pit area and it's ugh, this is just nasty so it's still coming in the window but I need fresh air stagnant air is just terrible it makes me feel awful and it, it hurts my skin if the air isn't moving and it just makes my lungs feel awful if I breathe stagnant air so I gotta have the window open for air and so yay that nasty burning smell hopefully I'm not breathing in extra carcinogens which of course ties into while walking to go to Walmart because I take the six mile round trip to Walmart every single day now before I go to bed <clears throat> if I haven't managed to go out I will leave at nine o'clock 10 o'clock at night take the two hour round trip to walk the six miles there and back and then I'll relax a bit here in the chair because I'm broken at that time and then I go to bed so let's see carcinogens yes 
because I was also thinking about, again, I, I've talked a bit about the differences in tars because yes, there's tar in cigarettes and there's tar if you smoke cannabis, but tar is just the collection of the wettest, thickest, nastiest part of the smoke. And cigarettes, tobacco and nicotine is bad for you in the first place. And so when you get the wettest, wettest, thickest, nastiest stuff, and then they put in 700 to 7,000 additives, all of which are carcinogenic on their own to increase the addictivity. Yeah, they say flavoring. But when you're smoking all that, the tar is a horrible horrible concoction of absolutely toxic materials there is tar when you smoke cannabis but that is just the thickest wettest part of burning the one plant the cannabis plant you're not getting any of those additives you're not getting that extra stuff you're getting just the thickest wettest part of the smoke from burning the one plant and while that's bad the thing about THC and the cannabis plant is that tar is near, nowhere near as bad for you. I have seen pictures and studies of, I mean, I've worked healthcare. Smoking is bad for you, horrible. And I have seen, I've taken care of so many people with COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, where they could breathe inward, but breathing outward is difficult, but they're just Perpetually out of breath, sitting up is too much. That's no way to live. And that's what's going to happen if you smoke cigarettes. Smokers' lungs, I have seen, not in person, but I have seen the pictures where they have taken a lifelong cigarette smoker's lungs and a lifelong cannabis smoker's lungs. The cannabis smoker's lungs, yeah, you can see that there was some damage. There was a little bit of damage from smoking here and there. They, you know, they didn't look healthy, but they were there. They were like 95% fully there with some damage around the edges. The tobacco smokers' lungs, what's left of them, the blackened, charred, like they're only half as large as they should be because of the destruction. Yeah. Smoking cannabis, smoking anything, is bad for you. But compared, oh my God, the difference. Especially since cannabis, the cannabinoids and cannabiniols and all that in cannabis, they do hunt down and destroy many, many, many different kinds of tumors and cancers. Not all of them. After all, plenty of people throughout the years have used cannabis merely as pain control for their end-stage cancers. It may be a miracle plant, but it's not a miracle plant. So, yeah, I may have lung cancer because apparently, because of the 20 polyps they had to remove from my colon, I am prone to certain types of tumors anyway, if not actual cancers. So this could be, I mean, just because there's a lump doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, it is a nodule in my lungs or lung on the left side. Just because it's there doesn't mean it is necessarily malignant. There are all sorts of benign tumors and such. Now, yes, in the past three years, I have been a pretty heavy cannabis smoker. But that's after an entire, what, 53 years worth of not smoking and being a non-smoker? So the amount of damage that, that cannabis is doing to my lungs, because smoking, it's going to do it. The amount of damage that's that doing to my lungs is comparatively nothing. So. I'm not worried about that, and I'm not worried about the cannabis smoking doing anything with the nodule in my lung, because if it is anything horrible, cannabis is actually going to help, if nothing else. Cannabis doesn't make cancers worse. If anything else, it's just neutral toward them. It's neutral or hostile towards tumors and certain cancers. I can only hope 
that is hostile towards this. Who knows? But, let's see, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, it went in fully into the whole carcinogen thing. I thought I'd sidetracked myself, and it turns out that no, I was right on track. Also, last night, when I took my walkies, we are now in freezing temperature. Last time I went, I wore an undershirt, a shirt like this, I wore my flannel shirt, and then I wore my light summer jacket, and I was a little bit too cold. But I didn't just want to wear my puffy jacket because a couple years back of wearing this thing, even in the middle of winter, I'd have to, it would be, before I even finished walking a mile, it would be tied around my waist, no matter how cold it was outside because I was just burning up. My body pumps out BTUs for heat. I mean, I am massive, and I don't know why, but it does, so, which is good. But last night, I decided I'm going to wear the puffy coat. So I had my puffy coat zipped up and I walked, and less than a mile, I had my puffy coat unzipped entirely, and less than three quarters of a mile, my sleeves were pulled up. So I spent the rest of the three mile trip with my coat unzipped, trying to not overheat in the freezing temperature. My body pumps out the heat and yet I am always so cold, except when the actual heat gets captured around me. Thumbs up for that. So, but then I've gone quite frequently, not so much since I've lost so much weight, but it still happens. But back before I lost all this weight, I would quite frequently go within the space of 60 seconds. I would literally go from being normal to just cold cold so cold to the point that i got goosebumps all over the place and i go oh boy i gotta get my coat on i'm freezing before i even get my coat on halfway on i've got a light coating of sweat on my forehead and all over my body and i stop putting on my coat and i take it off because now i'm overheating and then it would follow up with i would be covered in that light sweat because I'm too hot and I've got goosebumps because I'm too cold at the same time. I'm sweating from because I'm too hot and I'm too hot and I've got goosebumps because I'm too cold and I'm too cold and it's happening at the same time. Yay. <laughs> Thank goodness my body has almost gotten better. It doesn't happen as often but I will quite frequently just be absolutely freezing, put on my jacket, and within 30 seconds, I've gone from absolutely freezing to, whew, I am gonna start sweating if I keep wearing this, and then have to take it off, and it's just wear it for 30 seconds, and that's heated me up for the rest of the day. Thumbs up. <laughs> if I hadn't had that hamster out, if my little doctor snarf I would have done some, oh, there's a bug flying in my room. I would have done an extra silly thing. One day I'm still going to start off again with me dashing in and coming to my chair. I've got all sorts of silly little goofy <coughs> video clips I'm going to be doing so I can start inserting those again. And one thing that I really want to do, really, 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 I want to make some animation type series things where I just talk about stuff, where I'll just talk about one subject but it's like that you know the people they'll make an avatar and then it moves and you know they animate that as they talk and they don't show themselves i want to do that except it's going to be greedly's and i want to because i don't have any animation software so burp what i want to i have to drink caffeinated beverages to wash down my methadone in the morning I want to actually cut out little things and then glue them to popsicle sticks and then use those actually hold them up in camera as I talk instead of I mean not me I'd, I'd be like down below and then putting them up in camera and then you just see the popsicle stick and the animated character and maybe my hand but that's the way I want to do that will I ever get it done probably not especially if I end up homeless so because I ain't gonna survive that not with my fibro and sleep apnea I end up homeless where I've got no home and I have to sleep on the street 
it ain't gonna be long before I have a heart attack and die. So, yay. I have also opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. So I'm gonna go through and thank 20 to 25 people because I've opened up the comments in my community tab. That all makes sense, doesn't it? <clears throat> Excuse me. It is a range, because even though I count in American Sign Language right here in front of my face, I still get lost so very, very often. So sorry about that, depression, fibromyalgia, and more. And I'm not mispronouncing, I'm not mispronouncing. Sometimes I do, I do it quite often. If I do mispronounce your username, no disrespect is intended. Here's what I meant to say before, but didn't. I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them all afterward. Thumbs up the ones I read. Answer as many as I can. But for right now, I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. Good comment, bad comment, indifferent comment. The fact is, you left a comment. Thank you very, very much. So I'm calling up my room. We have Cole Romriel. I sure hope I'm close. Thank you very, very much. And Brian Glenn. Greatly appreciated. Severe death. Heck of a name, thank you very much. Isaiah, greatly appreciated. And PS3 D Bags, <laughs> how about that? Ryan Lane, greatly appreciated. James Laura, thumbs up and thank you. And Kathy Kitzkat, been a while since I've seen you in the comments. Good to know that you're okay. Hackador DeLeaves, I know we're close, but thank you very, very much. And Silent Apathy, thank you very, very much. 1304, thank you very, very much. Mark Kenner, greatly appreciated. Thomas S. Thumbs up and thank you. Fruit Graphics? I sure hope I'm close. Double Dragon, greatly appreciated. And 18 Candy, I think it would be. Thumbs up, thank you. Silent Cloaksy, greatly appreciated. And Ramitsu, thumbs up and thank you. Ramstein Harris, greatly appreciated. The Nameless Exile, I like that name. Gavin McNulty, greatly appreciated. Oh My Word Winter, thumbs up and thank you. Mode Arafin, I sure hope I'm close. Coda Legends, greatly appreciated. And El Churo, thank you all so very, very much. Greatly appreciated this data to get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with actual people, even though it's just in text, but, and that is a very good thing. So thank you very much. <laughs> that was back in the late 70s, early 80s, when they had Second City Television with Eugene Levy and John Candy and God, I've forgotten all their names, but aside from that, they had all these people on Second City Television. One of the things John Candy did is he would pretend to be this cheap TV host, and they would go like, 3D House of Combs. And it was supposed to be horror, so... And so that stuff still sticks in my head. I remember all those things, of course. I still say things that I learned from TV from 40 years ago. If you can check out my various links, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron, that would be very cool. Very appreciated. I really don't want to be homeless. I really don't. So if you can help, that would be very cool. Like one of these Patreon.com patrons, these beautiful and awesome people. Thank you very, very much. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes and deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. And I mean that, so thank you very, very much. And if you can toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get for my existence. Plus, of course, YouTube lives on engagement. So if you could smash that like button, that would be great. Thank you very, very much. And of course, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be very cool. I will do my very best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time if you are down for it. So thumbs up for that. Nothing very exciting. I'm never going to have any huge like Sean, D Sean, Shane Dawson documentaries. I'm never going to have any of these in-depth criticism videos. I'm just me doing the things that I find either entertaining or funny. So thank you very much for coming along with me on this journey of exploration on this channel and on my game channel which hopefully i'll have a a link up there i've got a game channel and i'm trying to get monetized but can't yet because i don't have the view time thumbs up for that well anyway though hopefully i'm going to have a reaction video today hopefully i'm going to have a game video for this channel hopefully a game video for my game channel hopefully i'm going to be able to live stream again if i just stop falling asleep all the time so you take care have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that, my friend, is a very good thing. Definitely a thumbs up.